So welcome to some more Q&A with Duran Ryder. Let's get stuck straight into it. This is my cat. This is my morning coffee. I just wake up. Boom, let's rock and roll. Let's get some questions done. So Butch is asking, can you help me out and break it down for me real quick, please? I'm not a vegan, but I want to make changes in my life. Interested in this raw fruit thing. Worried about getting enough protein, eating enough calories. For the last week, I've been eating tons of bananas and crushing the smoothies, but I get hungry quick. I'm very active, mountain biking, rock climbing, gym, etc. I want to make sure I'm doing this right so I don't get bummed out. I saw the word diet in there, Butch. Get that word out of your vocabulary. This is a lifestyle. When we make something a lifestyle, it becomes something we can do forever. When it's a diet, then we get caught in this diet merry-go-round. I'll try that diet or the paleo diet. Or the trial is diets. It's got to be a lifestyle. It's a bit like cycling. When people get a mountain bike or whatever and they... They don't wear a helmet or they don't watch where they're going or they don't they don't embrace the thing. They just get a bike and just go and ride it, but they don't really think about anything else. And they have a big crash or they fuck up their knees, their IT band gets tired or whatever. And people just, they just sort of isolate and fragmentize one area of their life. But it's got to be a whole lifestyle change. Like when you get a bicycle, you get into cycling, you need to get more sleep. You need to drink more water, you need to eat more calories so you can continue to cycle and enjoy it. You need to look at your stretching techniques, you look at, you look at everything you positive mental attitude, outlook, etc. You've got to look at these things. Otherwise, if you just do one little change, it's not that's really going to happen, you know. Or you're going to run into some problems and go, oh, well, did that. So in cycling, people come to cycling, they, they don't change anything in their life. They still go out getting drunk with their mates. And, and I've got some friends who've got so much talent, but they are using their talent because they're going out on the whatever and just getting hammered and stuff. But they don't change their lifestyle. They've been that party lifestyle and the cycle lifestyle so the talent gets capped, we have to just be unleashed. So with the change of diet, we have to have a change of lifestyle. So if you bring in all your negative thoughts or your wanker friends with you and go, oh, you're doing bananas for, you're way too healthy, you're just too carbohydrate. If you bring all those people into your new life with you, they just, you know, it's hard to fly like an eagle if you hang out with turkeys. Sorry, turkeys. So you want to get rid of the turkeys in your life, hang out with eagles, fly like an eagle, get enough carbohydrate calories every single day, regardless of what your activity level is. When you try and limit your carbohydrate calories, <laughs> that's just like that's just like running with your shoelaces undone. That's like riding with 20 PSI on your tires. That's like riding with your handlebars turned around. That's like riding with one one hand on the bars and one eye covered like that. And just eventually, you're going to crash so hard that you're going to go, fuck, what happened? What happened? You know, I see that all the time on the internet, just people writing books about it making blogs about it, making YouTube videos about it, making names about it. Oh, I tried the raw food thing and the vegan thing, it didn't work for me, and I was at orthorexia and anorexia, and I calorie restricted and tried to do a thousand calories a day or two thousand calories a day and being strong and big, and it, it didn't work for me, that vegan thing or the raw food thing. We get enough calories in, otherwise we fail ethically. Protein's a non-issue. There's not even a medical word for protein deficiency. Look it up. There's quashiocal, there's marasmus, there's quashiocal marasmus, but these all refer to caloric deficiencies. Like they'll say protein deficient, caloric deficiency. So hang on, like, what is it? It's, it's like the, so you're saying Japanese Australian conglomeration. It's like, is it Japanese or is it Australian? You know, like you've got to have a single thing. So there's no actual medical word for protein deficiency. Look it up. Go to the World Health Organization website, look it up. Protein deficiency. If there was such a thing as protein deficiency, you'd be 50 grams of protein isolate and that'd be reversed. Just like when someone has a vitamin C issue, you give them you know, 80 milligrams of vitamin C a day, the vitamin C, the scurvy goes away. If someone has a protein deficiency, which is impossible, you give them 50 grams of protein a day, technically the protein deficiency should reverse, but there's not even a test protein deficiency. But if you give these starving people who have protein deficiency, you give them 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 calories a day, miraculously, the protein deficiency, aka the quashioka of Erasmus, goes away. So there's not a medical word for protein deficiency. It's caloric deficiency. That's all there is. So if you get enough calories, you get enough protein. All that's going to happen if you don't eat enough calories, your, your athletic performance is just going to go woo and crash. Look what happened to Lance Armstrong when he didn't eat enough calories. He almost lost the Tour de France. Same with Contador. Same with the Schlex. If you don't get enough carbs, see you later. So eat as much as you want. Fruit's the best, but we don't live in a fruity world, unfortunately. I might be in Union Square, NYC. I'll have 500 bucks in my pocket. I'm like... Where's the fruit? I want it now. Best quality, A grade, tasty, ripe. Where is it? Oh, it's not there. Okay, here's some dates, here's some bottled juice. You know what I mean? I can have the most money in my pocket, whatever. Even Bill Gates can't afford this lifestyle. So you've got to be organized and have 
things ripening and ready, boxes, bananas, boxes, dates, mangoes, whatever, back up, move to places where you can get enough food. It's like cycling. I don't live in places I can't train in. I love to cycle. I love to be exploring. I'm not going to stay in a place I can't ride my bike. Fuck that. So I'm going to stay in places where I can eat healthy. Even here yesterday, I was in Thailand, and I went to my pineapple lady. She wasn't there. Normally, I get a 1,000-calorie box of pineapple. already chopped up, put my cup in the pool, and slap it down, 1,000 calories. Thanks for coming. Went there. She's not there. I'm like, whoa. So I went down to the supermarket, got two liters of pasteurized juice, no preservatives, no flavors, just knock it back, 1,000 calories, sweet, thanks for coming, rock and roll. So have the backup plan. For me, it's juice or dried fruit. For some people, it might be rice or potatoes or things like that. The vegan, the Dougal style, Dr. Ornish, Dr. Bernard, Dr. Esselstein, heartattackproof.com style website recipes, low fat, low salt, no oil, no animal, vegan, whole food, plant, carbohydrates, fantastic way to stay slim and healthy for life. I'm a big fan of fruit. Fruit's the best. Most nutrients per calorie digest the best, best for the planet. But planning to get that in this sort of society where fruit is like, well, that's a lot of fruit going to eat there. That's like five bananas. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard. Situational inconvenience can be your worst enemy. If you can get over the social disapproval, people go, well, you eat a lot of bananas. You look a monkey. So situational inconvenience can be a real a bugger. So have the backup food plans. Don't be like my friend who's obese trying to do 811 and they're going from bananas. They can't get bananas, so they're not going to have the pasteurized juice like I have because I was cooked. So what they do is they go straight past the pasteurized juice, straight into McDonald's and have the Big Macs. And then they say, oh, yeah, I'm not really losing the weight. Like, it's not really happening. And I'm like, get off the fucking Big Macs. Get on the beans and rice if you run out of fruit. Get on the pasteurized fruit juice, man. You'll be fucking laughing in no time. So that's the secret. Protein's not an issue. Get enough carbohydrate, calories from favorite fruits. Get the early nights. Get to sleep. Get your bike measured so your seat height's not fucking up your knees. Things like that. Hang around better people and you're laughing. Live like a champ. And people are like, so that's just extra work. It's, if you want to be better as a human being, it's extra work. Simple as that. Because that sounds like extra work. Peeling an extra few bananas or that's like going to the shop and that's just extra work. I can't do that. I'm too busy fighting my life away into the sofa watching watching the Seinfeld reruns. And that's what some people say to me, extra I'm like, cool, next, next person. <laughs> There's always plenty of people out there who want it and are prepared to do whatever it takes. So get the calories in. Just calories, calories, calories. Don't be a hungry horse. Eating the ducks. Next question, Harley, what's your main source of income? Oh, that's a good question. What's your main source of income? I'd say it'd be YouTube at the moment because I'm not the, one of the highest paid YouTubers in Australia. If you look at the some of the YouTube stats out there, I'm like uh, number one in raw food, vegan world. Like, you can, Dan the Man, I even get almost double the hits Dan the Man's getting. Like, I think Dan the Man last few days, 530,000 hits. Um, I've got over 1.2 million, I think it was. I'm just my single channel during writers. So 1.2 million, Dan the Man, 530,000. Kevin Johnny, Kevin just scraped over 100,000 views in the last few days. So, YouTube definitely can be an income earner. I'd say so, yeah. You look it up. A lot of people go, you can get money from YouTube. It's like, look it up. I do retreats. I do talks. I've got a book coming out soon. I do mentoring as well. But YouTube is my main passion because I can reach such a big audience. I mean, I can mentor someone, one single person, and put energy into that. And I can put the same energy into doing a video where thousands of new people can watch it for free. And I'm still getting, still paying the fruit bills all that. So that's fantastic. YouTube's incredible. So thanks to YouTube for, for helping me out with that one. Because it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. If someone said to me this time last year, you'll be getting double the hits Dan the Man's getting, I'd be like, no way, man. No way, that's impossible. Or if they said, you know, you'll be getting <laughs> 10 times the hit Kevin Johnny's getting, I'd say, no way, man. Kevin Johnny's the man, man. He's getting hits of hits. And now I'm just like, yeah, double the size Dan the Man, 10 times bigger than Kevin Johnny, just from being consistent with the videos and being inspired by both those guys who are just out there, consistent videos, consistent videos, sharing it, blah, blah, blah. That's how you get your name out there. Be consistent, be passionate. And don't worry about what the trolls say. Just... I started working in a factory one time back in 97 and I really hated it. But it was good money and I was saving up to so buy a new bicycle. So I've got my new bicycle, $2,000 money course, quit that job in the factory because it was just hanging out with smokers and, and downers and just you know, people working in the factory. Now. It's a pretty dead end job and you're not passionate about what you do. So I got a job with a bicycle message. I love that. I did that for many, many years. I did like the base fitness. Eventually got a job in a bicycle store, 
and did that for many years. But eventually, all my conversations with the customers were starting to head towards diet. I worked as a personal trainer between that and the gym for many years. But I'd always be going around diet. I'm like, man, I've got to, I've got to work for myself. But I'm stepping on too many toes here. So eventually, I just got out of that. And then just before I was about to leave the bike shop, I got hit by a bus. And so then I was, I couldn't work at all. I was living on welfare for many years, just struggling like fifty percent below the poverty line. And did that for many years, just not working, bad knees, things like that. And that actually gave me the time to study, you know, personal study, stuff like that, and become who I am today. So getting hit by the bus was a bit of a blessing there. And now, you know, making the money I'm making now, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I encourage people, get out of doing what you hate and get into doing what you love every day. Because when all your work is play, you never work another day. I have to limit my time at work on the computer talking to people so I can give so much, I can end up not giving to myself. But you've got to be careful when you're working in your passion because you're going to give so much of yourself. You need to get more calories in. There's no way I could be the biggest banana on YouTube in the raw food or the vegan world by under eating on calories. The more calories I eat, the more hits I get. It's just how it is. So I give more energy. I be more entertaining versus being boring, going, hey, uh, my name's Jerry Nida, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, um, uh, hair, hair scrunchies really raw. Um, I don't know, but like, you know, you know, it's just like, come on, that's boring. We've got to have the calories in so we can pump it every fucking day. You can steamroll the troll comments, whatever. Just cruise on down to YouTube success, <laughs> laughing. The audience is on the net, the money's in the bank. It's a win, win, win. Loving it. So get the calories in. That's how I get my coin. Any more questions, post them down below, and let's bang out more during a Q&A. Thanks for watching. See you later. Mm -hmm.